Hey gang, we are in Cuttingsville, Vermont, small town in Vermont, up to the north here, and we're at a cemetery called Laurel Glen Cemetery. Really interesting story today. I want to thank one of our Patreon members, Jack T, for suggesting this story. And it's kind of like about an eccentric man that did some ins very eccentric things in the way of building a, an unbelievable mausoleum. So we're gonna see the mausoleum. We're gonna walk through this very small cemetery. It's right over there. It's a grand mausoleum for himself and his family. And then also we'll see the mansion that he built right across the street because he wanted to be near while he was alive, of course, and we're going to hear some eerie things about that and, of course, some other structures. So let's take a walk and let's just head right over towards the mausoleum. It is really something else, I'll tell you. A lot of old stones here. We'll try to look at a few as we walk to the mausoleum of the family of John Porter Bowman. He was born in Clarendon, Vermont, January 26, 1816. So we're going back very far in time here. So he started when he was 15 years old, he was a tanner. And he later actually owned a tannery here, right here in this town. It's kind of where he got his start. Cuttingsville. And in 1852, he moved to a place called Stony Creek, which is in New York. And that's where his career really took off. And he became very wealthy. Short story is that, of course, he stayed in the tannery business. And he got really, really big there after owning another tannery, growing it. I mean, he became, he became a tanning magnet. Now, everything was perfect in his life. I mean, he had success. He had a fortune. He had a beautiful wife. Her name was Jenny. And an adorable newborn daughter named Addie. They lived in a beautiful home in Stony Creek. They had everything they could have wanted, but as so often happens, tragedy was about to strike. It would be the little daughter, Addie, who at only four months old would pass away late August 1854. And of course they were both grief stricken. But time would pass, time would heal, and they would have another child, a daughter named Ella. Life was moving on, hearts were healing, and the good times were returning. But then, many years later, those dark clouds would return and more tragedy would befall the family, this time in multiple ways. Now his daughter, Ella, who was 22, she died. They say she was 22, some records say she was 23. But it was in late June, the spring of 1879. And with the heartbreak, his wife, Jenny, Ella's mother, followed her in death, succumbing, probably of heartbreak just a year later. She was only 55 years old. And now John was completely devastated. All of this work, this paradise, for what? For what? So he moved back here to Vermont, up here, and he was determined that he was going to build them a very, very special place for them to rest in peace. Of course, he had endless money, so he began the design of this mausoleum that we see here before us. Let's go take a look. He purchased the land adjacent to the cemetery, you can see in the background the mansion that he built. He bought all that land over there so he could stay in life near his loved ones who had passed beyond the veil. 
There was an addition to the mansion. He had a greenhouse made. We'll take a look at that so that flowers could be provided here on a regular basis. Now, if you look, you'll see the amazing statue that is in his likeness. They had over 125 workers make this, this whole thing. And it's, look at this, all marble. Now the mausoleum is granite, but this is, wow, this is amazing. And there he is. It is an amazing state of preservation. And he is gazing. If you look in his eyes, he is gazing right at you. You can see here, we'll step back. He has a top hat. He has a wreath. And this statue is massive. It's a little bigger than human scale. And it uh, kind of makes it look spooky. I'm trying to get an angle for you. I think I'll go back down the stairs so we can get a better look at this amazing work. So yeah, 125 workers to put this together. So of course there were many skilled stone cutters. They spent about a year making all this. It cost between seventy-five and eighty thousand dollars. So that's about two million dollars today. And as you look up, I it's tough. There's a big hill here, so I can't really. But it is kind of like a. Well, let me try and step back here. It is in the Greek Revival. Greek Revival, you can see up here. Try to get an angle for you. And it says 1880 up there and his name Bauman. So, yeah, he lived here. Oh, look, there's another statue of him. In there we can see in and the statues. Well, let's look at the crypts first. We have Addie on top, Ella, Jenny, his wife, and then John is on the bottom. And here's the back of his, another bust for him. And then you see also there's a bust of his wife. We'll try to get a zoom in on that. Look at that. And there looks like there's a candelabra there. And there is the baby. How sad. Get a zoom in on that. It's a beautiful sculpture, huh? There's mirrors there, if you see. And let's look up here the ceiling oh there's there's something up there a couch of dreamless sleep isn't that interesting interesting all right let's walk across to the mansion This is a historic landmark, I believe, is now owned by the state of Vermont. Unfortunately, we will not be able to get inside. It was, a, it was rented out after he died 
to private, private, and then I think that they had a bookstore in here for a while, and then it closed up. Now there's been some renovation work done. Well, look at that up there. Let me give you a, a shot if I can up top. It is amazing. Look at that. And it's been, like I said, it's been closed down for a while. Now they say that, I believe, while he was alive, he would, of course, you know, living here, he would have the table set by the servants every day, every night. Not just for himself, but for Jenny and Addie. Well, I don't know about Addie, but for sure Ella and Jenny every night. Can you imagine? And he had a will set up that after he died, a trust to maintain this and to make sure that the tables were still set every night. He believed in reincarnation, they say. And they did that. They did that until the 1950s. And then after the 1950s, it's just the money ran out and it fell in disrepair. Now the greenhouse is over here. I'm going to give you a shot of it across the street. And this was built so they could always provide daily fresh flowers for the cemetery and also the mausoleum. So I'm over by the greenhouse now across the street. And by the way, there's another outbuilding there. It looks like a garage, maybe for the coachman, the guest house, or the house for the servants, I'm sure that was. But this is the, it says conservatory up there. Beautiful old building. Look at the stained glass. Let's take a quick look. Nothing ornate. But it looks to be colored. Yeah, look at that. No glass roof, interestingly. Relying on all the window to come in from the side. Some interesting detailing. Let's see if we can get a glimpse of what's happening inside. Yeah, it looks like you can see through the glass. Oh yeah. So there's a look. You can see some of the colors in the stained glass. Interesting.
that big old mausoleum where they are and where they will rest for eternity.